welcome friends today the topic is human response to vibration vibration we find it all around our body vibration when we walk it is a vibration when there is an earthquake it is a vibration when we are drilling it is a vibration when we are driving it is a vibration all around we see vibration but as an ergonomist as a human factor engineer we have to look around what are the response body gives when it is exposed to vibration it can be a hand arm vibration it can be a, the whole body is exposed to the vibration before learning this topic it is very important to learn the different disciplines or to have a basic knowledge about the different disciplines because it is a response which is a cognitive effect physiological effect how body is giving a reaction of the action that is vibration here and the basic anatomy of the body basic physiology of the body basic biology of the body because many terms when we come in a human response to vibration topic we are unaware like tendonitis engineer doesn't know what what it is about like rms a physician doesn't know what is rms value so there are many terms that is why this study is possible with the basic knowledge about human aspects which covers through biology anatomy physiology vibration aspects which covers to through the basic signal processing and mechanical engineering physics physics is all around we are a kind of ignorant if we doesn't know what the force is about vibration is nothing but a force having an acceleration so knowledge of basic engineering and physics and the response response is a social sciences effect as well as biological effect so it can be biomechanics of the body it can be psychology of the mind when we are driving in a very uh, rough terrain for example plowing the the fields by tractors cutting the grass over the grass line so in all those cases not only our body but the mind is also affected that is why these fields are important there are many situations cutting log wooden log chipping the roads for reconstruction uh driving heavy vehicles all around the body um or transporting the vehicles transporting yourself moving around so the basic uh, point here is we have to learn what the vibration is vibration is nothing but how the body changes its position the change in the position can be measured in terms of displacement can be measured in terms of velocity can be measured in terms of acceleration the best term for measuring the vibration is acceleration and that acceleration as we engineers know can be measured in meter per second square in terms of human response to vibration most of the the ergonomists have suggest that measure as a as a proportion of the gravitational acceleration gravitational acceleration we go back to the newton's law of force force body uh, earth pulls every body towards itself with an acceleration of what is called as gravitational acceleration that is nothing but 9.81 meter per second square so vibration is defined as a movement which a body makes about a fixed point when we know the vibration there are the basic point of a start is a movement of a pendulum when a pendulum move about a fixed axis we call it vibration but it is called as sinusoidal vibration it is a movement about a fixed point it goes to a higher value goes down to a to a lower value and then come back to the same point it can be of different types oscillatory motions can be of different type there may be combination of oscillatory motions which we are not able to identify them as oscillatory motions then we call them as random vibrations random exposures like see here motion movement of the body it can be deterministic it can be random randomness is as i have explained this term in my 
probability and statistics lecture that randomness is nothing but limitation of our mind. When knowledge is limited to understand the reasons, we call it random. The same thing applies over here. Either the motion can be deterministic or the motion can be random. Deterministic motion can be periodic or non-periodic. We will see these differences of periodic and non-periodic motion, random motion, which can be further divided into stationary ergodic motion or non-stationary motions. Means the randomness is of the same nature over the span of time or it can be different in nature. Let's see there. The first one, we call it sinusoidal motion. When the thing goes up and down, up and down at a particular constant frequency. It can be multi-sinusoidal where many movements like we are moving on a road. The road is very bumpy. Road has its own movement and also road has, road has a small crater so the roughness or the machinery of the, the scooter that is creating is the vibration with the higher frequency. So there are combination of higher frequency of vibration due to the wheels of the scooter and due to the, 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 the profile of the road. So all combined together we call it multi-sinusoidal vibration. But further, this is called as transient vibration. For example, there is a sound, a heavy sound is of the alarm and that alarm may go high and down. It may be similar to an increase in a motion when engine starts and goes down. Then we call a shock. Shock may be for a moment. Shock may be a fraction of moment or a millisecond of a millisecond. In a millisecond, it may be shock is due to impulsive action. When there is an impulsive force, we call it shock. It can be you are putting a hammer, there is a shock, the linter is crushed down. So that is called shock. Then we call stationary random vibration. A random vibration we categorize in two stationary and non-stationary means the randomness which is non-predictable. We, we cannot determine the exact nature of the, the response but it seems to be random because we are not able to define a common formula to predict this that particular curve. It is a stationary. See the example of non-stationary going small, small random and then high random. So this is non-stationary movement, but the time span over which the analysis being made is to be known. This multi-sinusoidal or the random motions is basically the combination of many sinusoidal movements, many oscillatory motions, which we assume. How do we obtain that particular nature? Or how do we go back in re-engineering uh, in transformations to understand how many combinations it had. So there are many deep analysis based on Fourier transformation and other transformation methods, wavelet uh, transformation method. So in which we measure the, the response and then we split into the different response or different response are there. We combine them and see how it look like. So that is what is our basic understanding or assumption that any motion which is an output not very understandable to us the nature but it is a combination of different motions like this for example you have a bumpy road wheels are moving at a speed some small engine speed is there some kind of roughness of the road and then some other vibration of air or something else when we combine all this, the response resulted in a complex wave which we called stationary random vibration or non-stationary random vibration. So this is how we understand what is vibration, what response it gives. Now this response can be measured in terms of displacement, how the body bumps up, goes down. So the displacement is at an angle. We consider omega as the angular velocity of the movement. F is the frequency at which that movement occurs. T is the time period. Now, if we uh, differentiate this displacement, the velocity is dx upon dt. So the curve which we obtain is the velocity curve. 
which looks like this then if we further differentiate it we get an acceleration that acceleration is generally measured in vibration response as a parameter to record what the level of vibration is in meter per second square or as a proportion of gravitational acceleration meter per second square so these are the basic equations either we convert the displacement into the acceleration or acceleration by integrating into the displacement now see how the peak is related to the to the zero value at the velocity and the minimum value at the acceleration when velocity uh, displacement is very negative the velocity is zero and the dis uh, acceleration is highest so these are the relationship of the response with this in some situations when there are some kind of exposure to some shocks for example when we are making a tunnel we are doing some kind of uh, uh, we are using the tools as well as we are using uh, some crackers so so those explosions are giving us added impulses added shocks waves so when there are many shocks waves in the wave of vibration observed then it is not an easy way to just represent the vibration in terms of the acceleration over the curve or converting the acceleration into the root mean square value as a representative value of the acceleration rather we must know that how many points of were very higher than the rms value of the acceleration because there may be some peaks and then the normal kind of uh, nature of the vibration so those peaks peak acceleration if it is 6 or 7 times higher than the uh, the rms value we call it a shock vibration there the consideration is not only rms there the crest factor plays an important role so crest factor is called as a parameter for measuring the vibration where the shock exists being ergonomics it is very important to know this understanding of vibration for getting the response on our human body the response on the body is not only in terms of biology or physiology of the body it is also the cognitive effect it affects our writing also if we are moving tra uh, traveling in car the driver has a different response because driver is looking outside world driver is driving his mind is busy his uh, vascular system has different response his body um, uh, somatic responses are different cognitive responses are different but for the traveler if he is writing he cannot write it properly there will be a tremor in writing as like the old age persons cannot sign as they were do, used to do in younger ages so this is kind of response our hearing affected motion sickness so ergonomist or the human vibration experts have categorized the exposure of vibration of human body into two basic categories one is called as exposure to the whole body when we are exposed to the the platform on which we are standing or sitting or lying down we are for example we are traveling in a train we are moving in an aircraft we are uh, riding a bicycle so these are all we call whole body vibration exposures they have their different effects then the other response category they have divided is called as hand arm vibration response for example cleaning the uh, uh, cleaning teeth by the dentist having a vibrator in hand doing massage over the head by the barber or chipping the road cutting grass by chainsaw so these are drilling uh, on the wall uh, screwing and screwing tasks so there are many tasks where we have the response of vibration being transmitted to human body through hands nowadays a new term has come vibration uh, uh food transmitted vibration food transmitted vibration like those who are chasing uh, thieves uh, the policeman chasing the thieves he is uh, ri uh, riding a bike at a very high speed uh, racers 
they are exposed to very heavy vibration to their toes and toes get the same kind of effect what the hand gets of a stone cutter or a chipo uh, kind of task so in my further lectures i will cover these things what are the effects of whole body vibration what are the effect of hand arm transmitted vibration how different standards of hand arm and uh, whole body vibrations can be used for recording the vibration response and can be used for further improving the task or the tool design so that way we will uh, learn more about human response to the vibration now this is the structure of the relationship between vibration and its environment so this is environment it can be road it can be rail it can be aerospace it can be aeroplane it can be marine it can be buildings high rise buildings multi story buildings causes of vibrations may be noise if heavy noise is there like uh, sonic booms may be uh, a cause of vibration which breaks glass windows near the airports near the space stations visual response sitting driving then person how it is affected individual variability the person which has better control its cognitive and vascular system or person having lesser control so lesser control may be having a problem of motion sickness other may not have a problem of motion sickness effects may be subjective effect may be in terms of activity for example your writing is affected your visual activity is affected your health is affected you may get a response like vomiting you may get a response like low back pain etc the external factors are what is your objective involved over there whether you are driving you are doing a uh, a task which requires a very very high concentration or some other thing so this is how we relate the vibration with its environment and humans